For more than three decades, I never felt that I belong. I never felt that there is a group, a community, or even a country to which I belong. Regardless of how I curated my appearances and my existence, there was never a harmony between my presumed identity and my society. As a child, I grew up in a family where I was made afraid of anyone out of the circle of the boundaries of my immediate family. I was led to believe that if I let anyone in, they would take over my thoughts, my behaviors, and eventually my identity. I lived under the fear, the shadow of the fear of others. As an adult, where I seemingly broke free from my little circle of my immediate family, I still believe that I'm not accepted as I am. I led myself to believe that because of my personal traits, because of my accent, and because of my identity, I do not belong. I lived under the shadow of fear of being labeled as others. As a result of this crippling fear, I never felt safe or guarded. And as a result of that, I never got the chance to develop a long-term authentic relation with anyone or anything. And for that very reason, I could never feel that I belong. There came a moment in my life that I felt I even do, do not belong to my own life. The life that I had so carefully curated over the years. In that moment, I realized that in all these years, I have curated my life apart from my context and my communities. And for that very reason, I have never felt safe. And for that very reason, I had never felt that I belong. My name is Somaye Dehwan. I'm a Dutchified Iranian, and I have reinvented my identity to become a community guardian. And the choice of this term community guardian was very simple because that's the literal translation of my family name. Deh means community, Bon means guardian. But there is another reason that I chose that I want to become the community guardian. And that's because I have a dream. You can call it a vision, if you will. <laughs> I have a dream to live in a world with true personal freedom of choice, equality of opportunity, and the ability for everyone to thrive. And that is balanced and harmonized with personal responsibility to contribute to the collective good. And to make that dream a reality, I started a journey to find the notion of one with everything, that one identity that encompasses everything that I am and I do and I love, I started a search, a journey. And on this journey, I spoke with many people, many, many people from all different walks of lives, from political activists to religion converts, from widows of war to poem, poets in exile, from victims of rape to professors of academia and practice. I spoke with anyone whose, cro whose path crossed with mine. Verbinding is the Dutch term for 
interconnectedness with an emotional hint towards interrelatedness and interdependencies. Verbinding is about our identities interwoven with our communities to which we directly or indirectly, consciously or subconsciously belong. We, we hear very often that we live in divided societies. Living in divided societies is another way of saying that we do not feel that we belong. And we do not feel that we belong because we, are, we do not feel that we are protected and guarded. So by guarding our communities, we can sa feel safe and guarded again. And when we feel safe and guarded again, we can feel that we belong. Today, I share with you why reinventing the wheel, reinventing our identities in the context of our communities is the key to the feeling of belonging, despite all our differences. Our systems, such as the famous Dutch Polder model, at best, focuses on our similarities. We have led to be afraid of our differences. And it is true, we all are different from each other, which is great, it makes us unique. But why should that uniqueness, why should that difference be a reason for being afraid of each other? What if valuing our differences is the key to feel safe and protected? Not just respecting and tolerating our differences, but actually and truly valuing our differences. As we heard from Sophie, we all have at some point in our lives felt excluded. I bet there is nobody sitting in this room saying, I've never been discriminated or excluded in my life. All of us, to a different degree, have experienced this. And we have experienced this because at some point, somewhere, someone has felt the fear. The fear of difference. Fear is a very natural feeling. Fear is an emotional reaction when we feel something is dangerous. Fear is the response to when we feel not safe and not protected. And if we feel safe and protected, then we do not have the urge to exclude or discriminate towards others. In this day and age of, uh, fifth, uh, as of 5G, the fifth generation of mobile networks, where networks are getting connected to networks at our fingertips, we feel the most disconnected from each other. Due to migration or immigration within the borders of our countries or across the borders, we no longer necessarily live where our parents lived. The first language of our children is not necessarily the same as ours. Our ethnicity and our nationality do not necessarily match anymore. And we are also caught not just in generational gaps, but also income gaps, political gaps, and cultural gaps, to name a few. We need to get back to our roots. And how do we do that? Because if we want to move forward, we need to know where we are standing. And to, to know where we are standing, we need to know where we are coming from. And for myself, in order to know what it means to be an Iranian, what it means to be an Iranian in exile, I had to go back to my own roots, to my family that I never understood. 
I realized only then that my family, particularly my father, was so protective of us and excluded anyone, even our uh, extended family, to get close to us because he, as of, at a very young age, around eight or nine years old, was set off on his own to take care of himself. And he very soon realized the only way he can do this and grow in his own uh, way was to drop his own language, his own identity, and adopt the language of the people from the capital because they were the only ones who were respected and valued. Not only he dropped his own language, his first language, he had to also drop the accent that he had from that language in order to be respected. And it worked for him. But the scar that it left at the subconscious level was transferred to me. And even he never talked to, about it with us, I had, at a subconscious level, adopted his coping mechanism, and in my head, I was also never accepted because of my accent. When I understood my Iranian heritage, I needed to understand my new context. I needed to understand what does it mean to be Dutch? What does it mean to be a non-native Dutch? I needed to understand the Dutch society that has hosted me since 2005 and has adopted me as one of their own since 2015. And for that, I read Dutch history. I got to know the Dutch traditions. I learned about the dikes. I learned about the golden age. I also learned about apartheid, the most famous Dutch world, word in the world. I also learned about the Dutch polder model that is based on compromise. And that's why we are so known in the world as the tolerant nation, that we can tolerate each other's differences. But I believe the time of toleration is over. We need to shift the gear and move towards synergy. Verbinding is a model based on synergy. Syn the essence of synergy is valuing our differences to build on our strength and to compensate for our weaknesses. And the key to valuing our differences is to realize that we all see the world not as it is, but as we are. Synergy catalyzes, unifies, and unleashes the greatest power within us. Synergy means that the whole is greater than it's the sum of its parts. Synergy helps us to continuously define our identities in our communities and continuously be open to our differences. And when we continuously reinvent our identities, we feel that we are not just protected and guarded, but we also feel that we belong. I chose to become a community guardian and not a community builder. Because in my opinion, when we say we need to build new communities, it means that we need to start from scratch and nothing existed before. No. There is a lot already available, and we need to guard those communities so we all can feel safe and protected again, and we can reinvent our, commu our identities within our, identi uh, our communities. We are hardwired to be social creatures, to be bonded with each other, and uh, we are divided because of our fear. So the sooner we start feeling guarded and protected, the sooner we can get together and bond with each other. And to lean into um, our need for bonding and overcome our fears, we need to reinvent our identities within our communities. And we need to get connected with our roots. I want you, I want to invite you to take a moment 
and we all think about the, the last time we unfriended someone on Facebook or blocked someone on Twitter or any other social media. I want us to think about the last time that we cancelled someone. And as next week is our election in the Netherlands, I want you to think about the last time you read, you read a statement from a political party that you do not agree with and thought they do not deserve to have a political forum. They do not deserve to have a vote. In all these instances and thoughts and actions, we have excluded someone and we have discriminated against someone out of fear that someday they may or may not discriminate against us or exclude us. And the only way we can solve this is reaching out to one another and address the state of being apart, our apartheid, together. The road to an inclusive and bonded society is not through excluding the exclusionist. The road to an inclusive and bonded society is by joining forces across sectors and synergizing. The road to an inclusive and bonded society is by created integrated solutions instead of just focusing on one component. The road to an inclusive society, I believe, is by having true personal freedom of choice, equality of opportunity, and the ability for everyone to thrive, which is balanced and harmonized by personal responsibility to contribute to the collective good. The road to an inclusive and bonded society, I believe, is by reinventing our identities in the context of our communities. Thank you.